I'm going to imitate new asphalt, so let's add dark spots along the edges. We click add a new layer and add a texture named Corona Distance. The next thing that needs to be added is color wise, so it's the wheel tracks. And we're going to use Corona Distance again for that matter. When you have a large surface and you're and you overlay several textures with different tiling one upon another. You can cover up a rather large area without any visible tiling effect, without any repetitive patterns. So hello everybody, this is Alex from Render Courses and today we're gonna see how to create an asphalt material for general plans. Now I'm talking about situations when you need to cover up large areas with a texture without using complex mapping, unwrapping, and similar things of that nature. So our goal is to create a material that looks realistic on a large surface. Now let's find out how to do that. I'm going to use Corona Render. So first thing, I'm going to create a Corona material and then add Corona Bitmap. To the diffuse parameter. So I've already prepared the texture for large surfaces. In one of my upcoming videos I'm gonna show you how to create such textures without tiling. For now I'll assign it to the road surface and click show shaded material in viewport. So mapping is 700 by 700 centimeters or 7 by 7 meters. I'm going to link the texture I'm using in the description below so that you could download it. There's a car in the scene and it helps us understand the scale of the texture and also apply mapping in the proper way. All right, so we've created the diffuse color, and as you can see, it has a slight tiling effect, sort of. Now, let's add some minor spots onto the surface to make it look less dull and kind of more homogenous. So, in real life, asphalt never looks too smooth or even. It tends to have rough patches here and there, Wet areas, for example, have a darker color. Dry areas, on the contrary, have a lighter kind of shade. The quality of the material also varies. So let's imitate all of those imperfections for better results. And we're going to need a composite material. We add a composite map to the diffuse parameter. And also, we'll leave the option keep old map as submap checked. Right here. Then we click add a new layer. And link a mask to this slot right here. All right. So this is the mask we are going to use. As you can see, it's kind of an even. Now, mind you, it shouldn't be too contrasting. It should contain both light and dark spots. You can pick a mask of your own and make sure it looks good in the interactive render. So you just kind of experiment with that. Okay, and now let's start interactive render. And this is the kind of result we get. To make sure the texture is applied correctly, we need to change the blend mode from normal to multiply. The multiply mode only uses dark spots while ignoring light spots and the color, the white color in general. 
So the texture looks kind of way too contrasting. So let's reduce opacity to about 20, 30%. And also we need to increase the size of the spots. To do that, we'll set tiling to 0 0.3. And my advice is to use prime numbers so that when you use multiple textures, their tile seams don't overlap. A prime number is divisible only by one and the number itself. This means that even numbers are off limits. So go ahead and Google the definition of prime numbers if you need to. See there, there are spots that are starting to show up. So let's zoom out to see a larger picture. You can still see a slight tiling effect. So let's further reduce tiling to 0 0.1. You can apply more textures with different tilings and masks using multiply blend mode. This will make your spots look more varied and help hide tiling. Okay, I think there's enough spots now. So let's imitate the gradient effect by creating darker areas along the edges of our road here. Real life asphalt tends to be darker or lighter along the curbs, depending on whether it's old or new road. Old asphalt tends to have a lighter shade along the curbs because it's more kind of dusty there. And new asphalt on the country has a sort of rich, vibrant color because it's not as worn out by cars and people and so on. So it looks dark and freshly laid along the edges while in the center it's worn out, hence uh, the light. Now I'm going to imitate new asphalt, so let's add dark spots along the edges. We click add a new layer and add a texture named Corona Distance. So Corona Distance uses other objects in the scene. In this case, it uses the curb to generate spots and gradients. And keep in mind that the curb needs to have another material which is different from the asphalt material. Otherwise, you'll end up with a, a recursive pattern. In other words, Corona Distance won't work in that case. So make sure to keep that in mind. And now let's assign some standard material to the curb. Let's go for this gray material. And now we click the plus icon to add the curb to the Corona Distance list. All right, now the material has been applied, but the gradient is way too small. So it's at 100 centimeters now. For road, the gradient should be between five and seven meters generally. So let's set distance parameter to 700. This is the gradient that we've got. Now for a more realistic effect, we might link another mask to this slot to add some rough edges so to speak. But the thing is, when I was testing this material, Corona Distance kept crashing, so let's not take any risks and add another mask. Now let's go back and select the Multiply Blend mode. Now if we zoom out, we can clearly see the darker edges we have aimed for. They're kind of too dark, so let's change opacity to 50% to make it look better. 50% is good. To create this effect on the road, you don't need to use any masks or textures or unwrap feature. The next thing that needs to be added is color wise. So it's the wheel tracks. And we're gonna use Corona distance again for that matter. So we're going to use Corona Distance again to point out the wheel tracks. Although this time we will need splines to generate the spots. 
I already have them in the scene, so I click on hide by name and here they are. These are the splines that we're going to use. And you can go ahead and create your own splines for sure. Now, I apply these splines on the main road where cars are running. In the driveways or in the parking lots, your splines may take a different shape to imitate turns and other car kind of maneuvers. So it all depends on your imagination at the end of the day. Mine are just regular splines, kind of. They're not too detailed, as you can clearly see. So make sure you have Enable in Render and Enable in Viewport options checked. The dimensions are 30 by 30. The splines are applied above the road surface. You don't need to assign any material to these splines. So we do a right mouse click on object properties here and uncheck renderable box in order to prevent the splines from being rendered because otherwise they will pop up in the render at a most inappropriate time. All right, splines are in their place and now we're going to create another layer, a submaterial within our composite material. So we add Corona distance, select the spline and click this little plus icon here. The line has been added to the list. Distance is currently at 100 centimeters. I don't know if that's enough. Let's make it 300 and then let's switch to multiply blend mode. Now let's start interactive render and here are our wheel tracks. You can see they have a rich vibrant black color. Now let's turn down opacity to 20%. All right, now the tracks are barely visible. So let's increase opacity to say 40. All right, that's much better. Let's make it 30. So we're almost finished with the diffuse color for our road. The only thing left to do now is to set up the reflection parameter. Now, as you know, in real life, asphalt is slightly reflective kind of shiny in the areas where uh, cars are normally running. So let's do that. So we need to add a mask to the reflection slot. Let's select Corona bitmap. I have some masks prepared right here. Make sure your mask is contrasting enough. All right, let's try it. This one. So we added to the reflection slot now. And so let's increase reflection level a little bit. Remember the card that serves to give us a sense of scale. Let's zoom in on that. So here are the reflections. The next we need to set up reflection texture. We need to slightly increase the scale because the tiling is too visible. And that's what makes it look so unrealistic right now. We'll go to reflection settings and set tiling to 0 0.3. 
and now we need to make them slightly blurry. To do that, we change glossiness to 0 0.7. And you can see that reflections have turned blurry. The asphalt is also reflective though. It looks like it's wet. Also, the texture doesn't look realistic, so we need to tone it down. So since we're going to reduce reflection, we need to select black. If we keep the white color and reduce reflection to, say, 30%, the entire road will become reflective. We don't want that. That's why we first select the black color and then reduce reflection to 30%. Let's make it 20. That's better. All right, that's done. Looks better already. We can see some spots there. Now let's bring it down to 10%. Now we're going to experiment a little and add composite texture to the reflection slot to make our reflections look more sophisticated. So we select composite texture and allow to use the old map as a submap. And now let's solidify what we've learned about composite. So we add a new layer, a new texture, and let's change tiling to 0 0.5 and select the multiply blend mode. All right, done. So when you have a large surface and you're and you overlay several textures with different tiling one upon another, you can cover up a rather large area without any visible tiling effect, without any repetitive patterns. Now that we've added several textures in the multiply blend mode, the material has turned dark. So let's increase reflection to 30% or 20 or 30 like this. So the last thing is uh, the last thing to do is to add roughness now. So the asphalt surface is rough after all. It's not hard at all. We just copy the diffuse color, which is the main texture of our road and we add it to the bump slot as instance why instance well that's because if we choose to change the color or the texture of our asphalt these changes will automatically apply to bump now i don't think the bump effect will be too visible now Let's take a look. So I recommend creating a different material for close-up views because the material we're using here is meant for the general and kind of aerial views. This is how it looks. Not too bad. We can add a more realistic, more sophisticated look to our road material by adding road markings. To do that, we need to create a new Corona distance map for our composite material and add road markings to Corona distance. Or we can add these markings to the existing Corona distance. Anyway, it's all optional. In the next video, we're going to learn how to create road markings. Also, we'll go through the most common mistakes made when working with road markings material. And that's it for today. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. Leave your comments and questions below. See you next time.